I wanted to talk about sort of a lot of the mistakes that students make as well as sort of the opportunities they don't take up that are there. Um, because I actually think that there's like a big disconnect between what students expect from gainage education and what educators are giving them uh, and not in a not in a good way. So um, my background, I've actually taught, I have the, the pleasure of teaching at a lot of different institutions. So I started my work at Worcester Polytechnic <laughs> Institute, uh, right down the road from Becker, uh, where I started as a teaching assistant. And then from there, I moved on to Daniel Webster College. Um, rest in peace. Uh, they have moved on uh, to, I don't even know what the hell they're doing anymore. From Daniel Webster, I moved uh, to Mount Ida College. Rest in peace. They're gone as well. All right, and here we are now at Becker College. So if you go to Becker College, don't get comfortable. Um, same time, I've also worked in the industry at Stomp Games, uh, which is a subsidiary of Tencent. Tencent owns like Fortnite and stuff. They're gone too. Uh, and I also own my own independent game company called Bomb Shelter Games. They're still around, so that's good. But uh, I wanted to talk about some, I don't know, misconceptions about what a game education is and what it is not. So there are a lot of benefits to a games education, right? Um, what it is, is it's really one of your only opportunities to work with like-minded individuals, where you are with hundreds of other people, all with a shared goal of wanting to get into game development. That's just never going to happen in your entire life, ever. So that's a good thing that we have. And this first slide will be about all the sort of positives associated with it. Also, quickly, if, the, if you feel free to chime in at any time. Um, I'm happy to listen. Obviously, a lot of you are students, so uh, feel free to chime in if you feel differently uh, at any point. So it is four years of possibility where you have just this time to explore. You will never have this amount of free time ever in your life again. And I know it might not feel like that when you're a student, but I promise you, imagine doing full-time work and then going home to a child and like how much time you have then. is You just have so much time to do stuff in college and that's just a world of opportunity. Uh, it's a chance to get a well-rounded uh, educational opportunity. Like You can study whatever. You want to learn about science, you want to learn about, I don't know, English literature like I studied. There are so many different things that you can learn while at college. Just because you're studying game development does not mean that it is the only thing you can study. And it's a great opportunity to figure out what makes you happy. So. I, like, I'm the epitome of this. I went in as a pre-med when I went to undergrad, uh, and then I was like, pre-med sucks. I gotta find something else. Uh, so I switched to anthropology, and I was like, well, anthropology also sucks. Let's do game design, because that's fun. Man, was I mistaken. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but it's also great for structured guidance, right, from your faculty, uh, from your peers, uh, people who have been where you've been before, to give you help along the road. It's a chance to work with those faculty who have been in the game industry themselves, working in AAA and Indie or whatever. Uh, maybe they're familiar with technology that you don't know. And it's probably one of the only opportunities to work with the cutting edge stuff, the VR, the AR, um, whatever technology it is. Chances are you can't afford it on your own. So college is really one of the few places you're allowed to do that. So those are good things. At the same time, education is also expensive. And it is very limiting, all right? I just said that the only chance you have to work with this technology is through college, but if you took what you paid to the college, you just bought technology, you would have like 40 Oculus Rifts a year, right? It's crazy. So college is wildly expensive. So you have to make the decision whether or not it is right for you. And it's also limiting. If you get a job in, if you get a degree in game design, do you think any other industry cares about that? Probably not, right? Like, the pharmaceutical industry does not care that you have a degree in game design. That's not going to help you in the long run. So the fact that you chose a degree that is so narrow is truly limiting. I also want to talk about what a game education is not. It is not a place for playing games. Now, I wish I could sit every student down and smack them in the face and tell them this a lot. But it's not just because, oh, I like playing video games. That's good for you. I like reading books. I'm not going to be a writer, OK? Uh, I also like to tell this to parents because for some reason they don't get that. A lot of the times they'll find a student who's just a C grade student and think, oh, they really like video games, they should make video games. That's just not how it works, all right? Uh, you need to be truly, truly driven and actually truly talented um, to be successful in a games education and in the game industry. So speaking of which, a game education is not a ticket to working in the game industry. It is not a guaranteed path. That's not how that works. We don't have that pipeline in place yet. 
Uh, and I think that is a lie that is perpetuated a lot. If someone, if some college says to you that there is a 90% placement rate, they are lying to your face. All right, that 90% placement rate might be at Starbucks. Okay, that's not in the game industry. So just be aware. I mean, <laughs> if you're in school already, you maybe missed that train and you have been lied to, but. That's just, it is what it is. It is not right for everyone. You have to be driven, you have to be talented, and you have to be willing to learn and go above and beyond. And that's sort of what we're going to talk about a lot in this section is, is not just being your average student, but being someone who pursues every opportunity possible to ensure that they are successful. Um, it is not the only path into the game industry as well. We haven't had games degrees for more than 20 years, I'd say. Uh, maybe even less than that. There are so many different ways to get into the game industry, and if you ask any different professional, they will tell you all the different roads that they took, right? Uh, it's not just, oh, I did this and now I'm here. Uh, some people started in QA and moved over. Some people never went to college. Some people are entirely self-taught. There's so many different routes into it, okay? Also wanted to start out with some hard truths about the game industry and about your world in games education, and it's just gonna help you become better uh, suited to succeed. So hard truth number one is <laughs> you alone, <clears throat> excuse me, are responsible for your success. Um, I, it's not my job to get you a job. It's not my job to advocate for you. You are an adult. It is not my job to get you to do assignments, to work outside the classroom. If you fail, that's on you. We get a lot of students who, like, through all these colleges we've been through, they come back, oh yeah, Mount Ida screwed me, right? Oh man, they totally set me up. I didn't get a job in the game industry. Daniel Webster Becker screwed me. What a terrible program. But if like, they actually reflected upon what they did during their time there, and I asked them, like, Yo, how many hours of Fortnite did you play? How many hours of League of Legends did you play while you were there? How often did you go outside your assignments and make something interesting? And they just blank stared, because it's on you, right? And that's true for any profession. <laughs> no one cares about your work or you, and that's something that sucks to hear, but no one is like actively tracking you down. There are not talent scouts at graduation waiting to hire you. It's just not how it works. It's your job to get yourself out there, to brag about yourself. So it's an active process, not just a passive thing. Like, I'll build it, they will come. That's totally wrong. It's on you to hound down these jobs, to get in hiring people's faces, and make them pay attention to you. <laughs> it does not matter how hard you try. We are past that. High school is over. Nobody cares that you try really hard. What matters is the results of the work that you put out. So if you put out garbage, you are garbage. Sorry, right? So if you are bad at drawing, you are a bad artist. You are not going to be successful in the industry because you're just not talented. Come to terms with that. And we'll talk more about that later. We are only measured by the quality. We do not care about your extracurriculars. I once had a, uh, my creative director in the industry, I asked him, you know, how much do you care about side projects, about academic achievement, all that stuff? He says, I don't care at all. I care only about the work that you have done. And that's it. You are measured by the quality of your work. So since this is about making the most of your education, we're not going to get into certain advice, things you can do while in school to better yourself. Okay, so uh, I just have a long list of different stuff. We'll go through them individually, and hopefully it will help, and feel free to flag me down if there's anything that confuses you at any time. So you want to figure out what you want from a degree in games. Because right now there is a disconnect between what a student generally wants from a games education versus what the educator is trying to give you. A lot of students who come into games think, um, this is, I want to go and work in games, so this is my best opportunity. I want my professors to teach me Unity. I want them to teach me Unreal and um, Autodesk, Maya, Adobe, whatever. You can learn that crap on YouTube. Right, so professors are not always interested in that. Your college program might not be this trade schools type of education. It might be, that could be the school that you went to, but oftentimes it's not because college professors and higher education institutions are not focused on teaching tools. They're focused on teaching theory, abstract thinking, right? If you go to Becker, you've probably heard that stupid agile mindset thing a thousand times, right? That's what they're focused on making you a better, more rounded individual by opening up your mind to new ways of thinking. Not how to code collision physics in Unity. Uh, and that's what students want to learn. But we don't teach that because tools get outdated all the time, so why waste our time on that? And it's a disconnect, and I think someday we'll figure out 
you know, supply will meet demand, and that's where you're going to see a lot of colleges go. And we have seen some colleges go that way. But at the same time, your like your WPIs or your Northeasterns or any of those established colleges are not going to change to fit what you want. They're going to remain in that we kind of call it ivory tower type of thinking. Another piece of advice is you need to learn to fall in love with your craft. If you don't love making games, then why the hell are you doing it, right? If you go home after class and you're like, I don't want to touch another game development project, you're doing it wrong. You need to find, like, find the passion, fall in love with the act of creation, where that's the thing that you go on to do. That's what you do to relax, is you make video games. You program, you draw art, you write, whatever it is that you do, you fall in love with that process because that love will push you to go the extra mile. It'll, it'll push you to go to the level in which you need to achieve. And if you don't love it, don't do it because you're going to put years and years of effort into it for nothing. We also need to fall in love with the act of learning. Game development is a constantly changing it's just always. Everything, there's new technology coming out all the time. So we are always learning new stuff. Everybody's learning the quirks of Unity 2019 that's coming out, or you're learning Maya 2019 that's going to come out, or the new ZBrush thing, right? There's always something to learn, and if you hate learning, you're done, right? Because that's just part of the everyday job is to stay up to date with this new stuff. New technology gets released every year, and if I was unwilling to learn how to interface with touch technology, I'm gone, right? I am outdated. I'm not useful to anyone. So you have to be able to adapt, and you have to like learning. This one I try to instill in my students as much as possible. If you want to be successful, in, if you want to get a job at all in the game industry, what you need to do is you need to find something that nobody likes to do, all right? Because the game industry is super competitive. You will have hundreds, if not thousands, of people applying to a single job. Uh, like you want to like, take a, a Blizzard job, for example. We'll get thousands of applicants because everybody wants to work at Blizzard. That'd be cool. I want to make Overwatch. Why not, right? So. How are you going to stand out? If you choose a profession that everybody loves to do, concept art, you're going to go up against thousands and thousands of people. But if you choose something that nobody likes to do, UI art, right? You're going against maybe 10 times less people because it's just, it's just a numbers game. Nobody wants to draw icons for a living, so you become the best at drawing icons, and you're good. Your likelihood of getting employed is so much higher. Right. So you'll eventually learn to love uh, that UI art or whatever field you choose, uh, or you'll just stomach it long enough to transfer out after you have years of experience so you can transfer to something you enjoy more. So something, some fields that everybody hates doing, um, for game designers, nobody likes to be a systems designer or a UI UX designer. I don't know why, but every job posting in the world is for those two things. So if you can become the best UI UX person, you are employable. Not only that, but UI UX is transferable to web, so you'll find a job there if you don't in games. Artists. Nobody likes UI artists. Nobody likes doing VFX artists. Nobody likes doing VFX art. So UI art, your icons, your HUD, all that fun stuff. Very rare to see people who are talented and passionate about doing those things. So that's where you want to specialize so that you can set yourself apart. VFX. Anybody like really like working in the particle system in Unity or Unreal? I hope you do, because that is something that people generally dislike. Uh, so if you can become the best at that, then you are good. Programming, nobody likes network programming, nobody likes doing tools programming, so your likelihood of getting hired in those fields is much higher. Places you want to avoid, game design. <laughs> game designer as a whole is hyper competitive because people think that anybody can just do that and they can just think of things. That's not how it works. So game designer as a position is very hard to get, as is a narrative designer, a writer. Writers, just you don't need that many of them. I mean, how many writers full-time did it take to write Mario Odyssey? One, and not even, like a guy in an afternoon, right? Uh, or gal in an afternoon, so th there's not a lot of work there. Concept artists. Everybody wants to be a concept artist, uh, and it's just hyper-competitive. Character art is also a hugely popular field. Gameplay programmers, everybody wants to be a gameplay programmer. So find something that people don't like to do and do that. Become the best at that. And when you get very, very good at something, you also want to broaden your skills. Okay? You want to be multidimensional. This is what we call a T-shaped employee. That's what a lot of studios are looking for. Okay? What that means is you are very, very good at something. This is from TF2. He's very, very good at heavy weaponry, right? But 
this person also has a broad set of skills. And so that's what we call a T-shaped employee. And what that means is, let's say you're very, very good at concept art, but what happens when the concept art phase runs out? See you. You're gone. We don't need you anymore. If all you can do is concept art, and there is no concept art to be done, you are not going to stay employed at that company. So we need a broad set of skills in case you need to work on something else. Concept art phase is done, but you're also good at 2D, uh, let's say, 3D modeling or 2D texture art or something like that. You can still contribute to the team and stay employed. Otherwise, you're gone, right? <clears throat> you also want to create something that sets you apart. When you're in school, you might be tempted to do a lot of cliche crap that nobody likes. So there are enough platformers in this world, okay? There are enough first-person shooters in the world. There are enough elves, there are enough knights, there are enough orcs, enough chibi crap, and there's enough Pokemon fan art. We do not need you drawing those things. Uh, a friend of mine was the art director at Turbine, and he said you wouldn't even believe the number of orcs and elves and high fantasy crap he sees on a daily basis. If you're making the same art as everybody else, the same programming games as everybody else, the same type of game design as everybody else, nothing's going to set you apart. And when you go to apply and they get 200 applications, and you're just another one of these stupid portfolios that's just like the rest, throw it right out. Okay? So make something that's interesting. Make something that scratch, people scratch their head out. Like, oh my god, how do they do that? That's really cool. I really like that mechanic that they made. School is the time to not necessarily worry about commercial success, right? It's about time to experiment with interesting things and create new and awesome products that you wouldn't have the time to do otherwise. It's really the only time in your life where you can take risks on projects and not really, there's no consequence for failing at them. So do something better than this sort of cliche nonsense. Also want to be honest with yourself, right? Sometimes you're just not good enough. <laughs> this is, uh, I, I see a lot of this, and it's sad to see, right? Because I'm sure that person who drew that gets compliments on their art from their mom and from their friends and stuff like that, maybe fan forums. Oh, that's a cool drawing, right? And then they tell me they want to be a concept artist, right? That's what commercial concept art looks like. That's not what it looks like, all right? And if, if this person were an artist and they were to come to uh, maybe their professor and their professor, oh, that's cool, let's just talk about ways to improve, because it's their job to keep you there and to help you improve, but there is just no chance in hell that that person is, in four years, going to become that talented. It's just not in the cards. So if you can identify that, you can identify that you just don't have the skill sets, you can find a field that you are better suited for. I'm not good enough to be an artist, I'm not good enough to be a programmer, maybe I can find something else that I'm good at. That will save you literally hundreds of thousands of dollars if you can identify that sooner rather than later. And that's not to say all your work's garbage. There are plenty of talented artists. Right? Another problem with games education is that your peers will hold you back. <laughs> and that sucks. Uh, because how the game, in, uh, how the education systems work. Education, uh, college education is based on retention. So a lot of colleges are tuition driven education, meaning we need to keep students at our college longer. Okay, oops. We need to keep our students at our college as long as possible so I can get as much money out of them as possible. That's just how it works, and that sucks to hear, but it is. That, what that means is you. Colleges are going to keep on subpar students longer so that we can get more money out of them, okay? That means your classroom is going to be filled with people who are less intelligent than you. And a lot of the time that your professor is going to be talking to them or working with people will be working with the least intelligent people in the room, trying to get them caught up to your level. So honestly, if you are talented enough to make it in games, then you will be smarter than all of your peers because that's how competitive it is. And you've probably noticed it in some of your classrooms, right? But it's just this human feeling as a professor is like, I need to help this person. And it's, I can't ignore them because if I ignore them, they drop out and we lose that tuition and then I get laid off because we don't have money. That's just how the education system works. It sucks, but it is what it is. So you're going to get held back. So don't let people hold you back. Take the initiative. Get working on something outside of the classroom. Do not wait for the class to get there. You want to work on a side-scrolling shooter, you want to work on a, a, a 3D, uh, whatever, a physics game, and your class is six months away from that, do not wait for them. 
go ahead and learn on your own because YouTube can teach you goddamn everything. Everything I know has been self-taught. You can teach yourself everything that a college professor is going to teach you about software, about any of those tools, because I guarantee half of them are just looking it up on YouTube before class anyway. Um, so if you take that initiative and you become more talented than your peers during class, you can use your class time to work on cooler projects, work on things that are more interesting to you, more challenging to you than what your peers are working on. Anything that sets you above them is going to help you in the long run. Okay? Uh, your professor will also help embrace that, if they're a good professor at least, right? They'll be like, oh, that's amazing. I see that you are so far ahead of this class. How can we facilitate that? What kind of project can I get you working on? And we can check in on it every week. That would be a mark of a good professor. Okay. Another thing to remember is that everything that you do in college is a, a potential portfolio piece. Okay, these games that I put up here were all projects that were started in college. So Kim Swift made Portal well in college and then got hired by Valve to finish it. Uh, Unfinished Swan, Flow, Genova Chen did Flow, it goes on to do Flower and Journey and all that fun stuff. All started as student projects. So everything that you do in college is a potential portfolio piece. It's a potential thing that could get you noticed. So treat every assignment as such. Uh, if you don't, if it's just, oh, I'm just doing this, then why the hell are you even doing it, right? If your goal is to become employed, and you're going to half-ass this thing that is going to help you get employed, why are you bothering? It's just a waste of your time if you're not treating that as such. You get a lot of people half-assing things, doing the bare minimum, just to get something done. And that's, it's totally against the entire philosophy of education. Just don't do it. So as I mentioned, you want to go beyond your assignments. When you go to graduate from college, you will graduate alongside hundreds of thousands of other people, all who study the same thing as you. And if all you did was the coursework that was assigned, you're just another face in the crowd. So go past those assignments. Do something else that sets you apart, that gets you noticed, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, right. So... A lot of people will say, oh, well, I can't make games, right? I, I am, I, I'm at a program that is teaching me how to make games. And the biggest piece of advice I can give them is if, that you, if you want to make games for a living, then make games. Don't wait. There's not going to be a day where someone walks up to you and shakes your hand and says, now you can make video games. You could make them before you even started your games education. You could make them freshman year. You could make them any, any time during that education. Get those games out there. Make something. Okay, whether it's a studio and you're making games and releasing them publicly, that's like, that's ideal, right? You have shipped titles, that's going to get you noticed, that's what employees are looking for, go for that. But if you can't, maybe you don't have enough friends, or maybe you don't have the right talent, you don't, I don't know, you don't have the resources to do it, make something, make a trailer, release some art, release anything, maps, mods, story, fan fiction, something that you can point to that says, I took the initiative, right? People don't hire just because you have like, okay, your talent is one thing, but they like to hire people who show drive, who have passion. Because if you're passionate about your projects, you're gonna be passionate about their projects as well. So show that you can do that. Next one is fail often, fail forwards, fail faster. And that should be a mantra for you. Um, this is a Henry Ford quote, failure is simply the opportunity to begin again this time more intelligently, right? Failure is such an amazing opportunity. Um, I'll, I'll walk you through some of my failures. I actually talked about it in an earlier lecture today, but this, I made this game till death. I say made this game, but I made this garbage heap um, that turned into just nothing. But what we got out of it, we spent a year and a half trying to make this a game, but it, we just were too, too young. We didn't have this know-how. And it turned into a trailer. That's really all we got out of it. But I showed that trailer to the, uh, I don't know, the, the head of the department at WPI, so I got a full ride to WPI, <clears throat> excuse me, based on that trailer. It was just sheer garbage. But he saw that I took the initiative outside the classroom to make something game related. He was impressed by that, offered me a scholarship to be a teaching assistant there. That WPI allowed, that my degree there allowed me to have time to form my own studio, to actually release a game. That game then got me noticed by the industry when I applied, allowing me to work in AAA. My experience in AAA allowed me to enter the world of higher education. And then from there, who knows? Everything builds on something. Everything is a step on, on this long journey towards whatever. You don't know. But everything that you do, even if it's a failure, will help you along the way as long as you utilize that failure. Okay? Failure is a good thing, but only if you use it as a learning opportunity. 
your games will fail, you release games that maybe, maybe they never even do get released, or you release games that are terrible. But you will learn something along the way. You'll learn who you can trust, you'll learn better techniques to approach programming, or new art techniques, or what not to do, what to do, and it will just help you grow as a professional. Okay, so we want to be able to fail often, that's fine, you constantly put yourself out there. We want to fail forwards, learn from each thing, have, have each failure push you towards your next goal and not, not hold you back. And then learn how to fail faster. Learn to be able to, like, be able to identify when a project is not going to be successful. Don't get hung up on it and let it fail. It's okay that it fails, that's not a problem. Just be able to quickly identify what's going wrong and then fail at it. Next thing is you need to be able to put yourself out there. A lot of students who come to game development programs are just shy or scared or whatever it is that they don't want to put themselves out there and get critique on it. They're afraid if I put my work and someone's going to be like, oh, your work sucks. Okay, well, F those guys, right? Forget about it. Who cares? You need to have the confidence to put yourself out there so that you can get feedback on your work. Okay? You need a portfolio. You need a website. Ideally, you'd have a website with a custom URL that looks nice and professional. Uh, but no matter what level you are, you need some way to share the work. Harken back to that point I was talking about earlier. No one cares about your work. No one's going to go search for it. You have to give it to them. And if you don't have a portfolio to show the stuff that you have made, there's no chance anyone's going to find it, right? Do not wait till senior year. Okay, that's too late by that point. You've missed the internship window. You've missed all that opportunities. And it's just too late. Get that website up as early as possible. Get advice. Do not go to the Career Center for advice on your portfolio page, on your game job resume. They're just not going to help you. Um, I mean, God bless career services, but it's just an impossible task. You, that Those people have to give advice to every single major out there. And what's right for a veterinarian's resume is not right for a game developer's resume. So don't work with the Career Center at your college as much as you would benefit so much more from working with a professional. What have they done? Uh, and you can find them at networking events, and we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, it's just much more insightful in terms of what your portfolio should look like um, and, and, and your resume. To that same note, get out there and research, right? Research what other people have done. Uh, look at the companies and what, who, who they hire. I want to work at Blizzard someday. Okay, cool. Let's look at the people that Blizzard hires. What do their portfolios look like? LinkedIn is such an awesome place for this because you can find, oh, they're one year in at an entry-level position at Blizzard. Let's find their portfolio because they're smart and they put their work out there and you can find it. And then measure up. Is my work as good as theirs? Is my work ever going to be as good as theirs? It's an unfair comparison to compare a student's work to a senior-level concept art work like I was doing earlier. That's not fair. But if you look at an entry-level portfolio versus your work, are you within the same realm? And if not, can you reach that? And if not, Maybe time to make a career move. All right. Next one is so important, networking. Uh, I mean, and hey, you're doing a good job, right? Because we're at networking events. Actually, one of the problems with this, with this talk specifically is if you're here, you're probably doing a good job already, right? You're at a networking event. You're hoping to learn. Good for you, right? And it's like your 200 colleagues, your classmates who are missing this lecture who are not doing so well. But networking is so, so important. And the example that I use when networking is when people hire, they hire people that they know, okay? Because if I were to ask you to do a group project and you needed to find a team member, would you turn to your friend who you know is good at concept art to do the concept art? Or would you post a job posting online, interview 20 different people, have them come in and interview them again, weed it down to one person? You just wouldn't do that, right? You find the person that you know, who you can trust, and the only way to be that person is through networking, right? So there's so many different opportunities in networking. Are we all on the Meetup app? Let's see, Meetup, uh, let's, uh, let's see what our next Meetup is here. So if you don't have the Meetup app, that's how Boston, basically all of our Meetups happen. All the Boston uh, networking events happen through Meetup. Let's see, February 18th, there's a Boston Indies meeting, right? There's so many different groups that you can go to. Boston Unity Group, Boston VR, Women in Games Boston, Boston Postmortem. Uh, BFIG, obviously, or Boston Fig, sorry. Boston VR, and it's such an opportunity to meet amazing people, talented people, right? Uh, just, I was thinking, I was here yesterday, and like the, the designer of uh, Bioshock was here. Like, how cool is that, right? Give him your card. Yo, he's not going to hire you. Like, that's fine. But you can pick his brain. I'm, I guarantee he'd be willing to talk to you, right? He seemed like a nice guy. Start that conversation, and he could serve as a mentor or 
a dozen people that you meet here could serve as mentors, right? Uh, it's such an opportunity. So a lot of students are scared of networking, and they shouldn't be, okay? Because there's just one simple rule to networking. Just don't be weird. Like, that's it. <laughs> if you're not weird, then you're fine. You're golden, okay? Because people go to networking events, believe it or not, to talk to people, right? So I'll go to these different things, and you'll see 10 of my students just hiding in a corner talking to each other, right? That's not helping you. That's not networking. You could have talked to each other at your dorm room. Go out to these things and meet people. That's what they're there to do, okay? Don't be shy. If you don't know how to talk to people, the one trick you ever need to know is just ask people about themselves. 100% of the people will be happy to talk about themselves. It's just like human nature to talk about what you do. So just go out there and do it. So more tips about networking. I want to go pretty deep into this because students generally suck at it. You attend an event. You pick an event, IGDA, bus, postmortem, BFIG, whatever. Maybe you go to a party that's sponsored by a company. Turbine does some of those. Um, Epic will do a few of those, right? Maybe you go to a trade show or something like that. Expos, as a general rule, are not good networking places. You'll go to PAX East. PAX East is not a good place to network because all the people who are working there likely are just hired to be there, right? Nintendo people are not Nintendo developers, right? They're not. They're hired marketing agencies to talk about your game. Their entire goal is to sell you their game. So the place to find people uh, at these expos is the after parties. So hopefully you're 21 and you can go to these things. If not, I'm sorry. But uh, a lot of the after parties uh, just happen at bars and you rub elbows, you schmooze, people's guards are down, they're tired, they're willing to talk, they just wanna have a good time. Expos, their guard is super heightened and they're there to sell you a game, so not really the best place to do it. But let's say there was just a meetup or we're going to Turbine or something and they're hosting an event. You wanna research who's gonna be there if you know that people are gonna be there. And like, oh my God, the lead designer of, um, I don't know, what's that new stupid Turbine game? Something about Game of Thrones is out. Oh my God, I wanna to talk to that person. Find out who they are, find out what they look like, right? And talk to them, right? They're there to talk. They, if they didn't wanna to talk to you, they would not have gone to the event. So you're not bothering them, I promise. Judge the conversation. Are they already talking to someone? Remember the golden rule, don't be weird. Weird people just walk in on other people's conversations and start joining in for no reason, right? Uh, so wait for them, wait for an opening. If they're talking to an old friend, they're probably gonna be talking for a long time. If they're talking to a stranger, that will probably wrap up. Uh, you'll lot, uh, oftentimes you'll see at these networking events like weird social circles form. You can just ease your way into one of those, that's not weird. Um, where people are just talking in a circle. I never really understood why they do that, but they do. Um, yeah, people don't bite. Don't jump in, don't interrupt, I sort of mentioned that. Once they're free, walk up, introduce yourself. If you have intentions like, hey, I'm looking for a mentor, hey, I'm looking for advice on game development, I'm looking for a job, just be upfront about it and they will help you. Uh, people appreciate honesty more so than you lying to them. Um, so just be upfront about it. Don't be pushy with the business cards, that's super weird, that breaks the rule. Like, hey, my name's Owen, here's my business card. I didn't ask you for that, stop, put it away, okay? Those things come out naturally at the end of the conversation. Oh, hey, that was cool. It was great to meet you. Uh, you know, in case you need anything, I'd love to follow up with you. Here's my business card. Great. To that same note, get freaking business cards, okay? It's really, really frustrating to people like, oh, yeah, great. Can I write down your information? Uh, okay, that seems kind of weird. You're going to come to my house and kill me or something? Like, just, just have business cards. They're cheap. They're super easy to get. You can get like 200 of them for like five bucks. Do not take a resume with you to a networking event. That breaks the rule as well, that's super weird. Someone walks up to me, hey, I'm looking for a job, here's my resume. I'm at a bar, what the hell am I gonna do with this piece of paper, right? <laughs> okay, and what will actually happen, like, oh, thanks so much, they'll politely smile at you, and when your back is turned, they're just gonna throw it out, because they're not gonna carry that around. That's just weird, that's the whole business card connect with them. So the whole purpose of networking, and something that students miss a lot, <laughs> is the follow-up. If you make these contacts, and you get these business cards, and you do not follow up with them, what was the point of going? You, you just wasted your night, okay? Because I guarantee that that lead designer at Unreal or whatever is not gonna call you. You're not that interesting. You're just a student. You have to reach out to them, and as soon as you start that conversation, they'll be happy to continue it, but they're not going out of their way to help some stranger that they happen to meet at a bar. So just be conscious of that. Let me move this thing, because it's making, there we go. So next day, quick follow-up email, and the follow-up email should have an action item in it, something that you want them to do. Oh, hey, you know, could you give me advice on this? Hey, could you put me in contact with this person? Otherwise, it's gonna be passive, they're gonna read it, oh, cool, and then they'll delete it and not follow up with you, okay? 
So there's no point in networking if you do not follow up. So tips about talking about yourself. I sort of mentioned it. Ask other people to talk about themselves. If you don't know how to talk about yourself, then there's, here's some tips. Uh, do not have a speech prepped for when someone asks you something. Like someone, if you're talking to someone, they give you a speech back. It's like, what the hell are you doing? That's not how humans talk to each other. So don't have that canned speech to give to them. Uh, just be able to talk intelligently about yourself, who you are, what you're working on. Uh, hey, I'm a student. I'm interested in doing programming. I've been working on this game about logs and fire or some shit. Right? Um, think about the questions that they might ask you about that. If, again, if you're not very good at making stuff up on the fly and going with the flow of conversation, it takes time and you have to get comfortable with it. But visualize what are they going to ask me and can I come up with responses to that? What, how might I answer that? Okay. If you know the responses ahead of time, you'll be able to sort of weave it into your uh, conversation naturally without being weird. And then be real, right? Uh, game developers who work in the trenches are generally just good, regular people who enjoy real people. They don't like the artificial crap. They're down to earth, okay? Uh, your marketing people or anyone who's hired to be at an event, those people are not real people. They're paid to be fake, to be friendly, so sort of avoid them. When you talk to regular game developers, don't be artificial, right? Just don't be overexcited. Like, don't be starstruck when you meet the art director at Naughty Dog or something like that. Hey, that's cool, but they're just a human being. Um, and they want to talk to you. You want to talk to them, that's fine. Don't be a chameleon. Don't change who you are to fit who you're speaking to. They'll see right through that. They'll see that you're being fake, and that's something that off-puts them. Just remember that smoozing is not a way to like, grease your say, grease, like trick someone into hiring you. Because if they find out that you lied or whatever, down the road and they end up hiring you, you're fired. Like if they found out that you lied to them about something, um, that's just non-negotiable. Like lying on a resume, you're immediately fired for that. So don't, it's not about greasing, it's making connections and becoming friends. And that's like part of the joy of being in the game development community is coming to these events and seeing all these people and they go, oh my God, how are you? And catching up and uh, it's just makes the world of game devs such a better place to be in. So the next step, you've connected with this person and you're still in school and maybe you're younger Anywhere from freshman to yeah, junior year, let's say, senior year, you should really be applying to jobs at that point. But you want to land yourself an internship, okay? Because internships are so much more valuable than really any college education. Uh, I, I was fortunate to be an intern in the game studio, and the amount I learned from there from just three to four months was far beyond what I learned in my classroom, okay? Uh, the problem with get, getting an internship is, one, they're hyper-competitive. You think they're, like jobs are hyper-competitive for game industry? Internships are so much more so, uh, and it sucks. There's also very, very, I don't know if I can think of any game internships here in Massachusetts. That's very, very difficult. Uh, so you would have to travel to get a true game industry um, internship. I guess we have SIP, um, which is the closest we have. Uh, Mass Digi does summer innovation program. I guess that's the closest we can do, but... Think outside the box. Internships, just as a general whole, are useful to you. It's useful to work in a professional setting, no matter what it is. Because if you can work as an acting professional, then there is hope for you in the game industry. If a job has to train you just in the basic function of operating in a business space, that's a very big detriment to you. So you can apply to all these different internships as long as what they do with that internship can help you in some way. So like maybe you want to work as an, at an architectural firm as a designer intern there because you can apply that to level design. Or maybe you want to do 3D furniture mock-ups at, uh, at Wayfair.com because that might help you with environmental modeling. Or maybe you're a programmer at IBM or something like that because that's going to help you program. Those are awesome opportunities. And there are so many out there beyond just game industry internships are almost impossible, like unicorns, to find them. But there are so many internships out there. I took this off the list of WGBH today. Uh, of the different internship opportunities that they have open right now. Uh, and WG, WGBH is a uh, public television, right? and they do, they do games as well, but all the sort of multimedia stuff. So there are so many opportunities that obviously you wouldn't think of that if you're looking for game internships, but working there would be so beneficial to you because you could work on their website and do graphics for that, or you could help um, you do their web programming or something. There's so many opportunities that just are not quite games, but still useful. We also want to gain relevant experience if possible. So internship is one route, and that's great if you can get that internship. That will help you. But you're going to see a lot of those job postings as entry level, but I need you to have three years experience. So you mean it's not entry level, right? But it is, and that's sort of what they expect of these entry level people is to already have experience, which is this mind-boggling paradox. But there are ways to get it, right? Um, 
Anything that's going to allow you to work with gaming technology professionally will help you along the way. Maybe you want to work at a summer camp. That's such an awesome thing to do as a, uh, as a student, teaching high schoolers how to use Maya, teaching them how to use Unity, Unreal. I could list off four companies I know that operate around here, if you're curious, and they also pay pretty well. Um, what was that? It was a Digital Media Academy was when I worked at. It was paying a 1000 bucks a week or something like that, which is pretty damn good money when you're a student. Uh, volunteering, you can volunteer at a lot of different places, tutoring, helping with gaming technology, or you can start your own company, and I can't advocate that enough. Don't wait for someone else to give you the job. Do it for yourself, right? Make your own job. I can work as a student for three years at my own studio, and I have three years of game development experience under my belt, right? And they can't argue that. Also, when you're a student, there are so many opportunities out there that are just for students specifically, and being in a college program is such an opportunity. Uh, and I put a, a lot of them up there, but I want to talk about a few specifically. Mass Digi SIP Summer Innovation Program is really great. Any alumni from that? Hey, Archon. Okay, cool. And it was a great experience, hopefully. Awesome. Wonderful. So, you finished it a while ago, just out of curiosity. Oh, uh, just this summer. Oh, oh, so you just did it. It's fresh. Okay, so I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not part of Mass Digi, but you spend the summer, right, the whole time working on products. So, so you made a, it from scratch? Yep. Okay, cool. And you were paid, right? Yep. Yeah. And did they do housing too or no? Uh, yeah. It, the, so the pay was a stipend, but yep. we got free housing. For yeah. Free that's awesome. Like, that's like, <laughs> nobody pays interns anymore. That's amazing that <laughs> you got that. What an awesome opportunity that something goes directly onto the resume. Hey, look, I made this game, and it's now out, presumably, or is going to get launched uh, soon. Right? We're going to launch. Right, so I have this launch title eventually uh, that I made, I worked on, here's my name in the credits. That's such a huge step. So Mass Digi SIP, I can't emphasize enough, is such a wonderful opportunity that's almost truly unique to Massachusetts. I don't know of any other state program that does that. So I'd highly recommend it. I don't know when the application deadline for that is. It should be in a while, right? I don't know. But you have to be a student to apply. Uh, there's also that game, uh, the game challenge. It's February 22nd and 23rd. Monty was mentioning it in the last talk, but a pitch competition that you can uh, partake in. I don't believe you have to be a student for that, though. The IGDA Scholars Program features that handsome man on the left, on my right. Um, but if you haven't heard of the IGDA Scholars Program, I, it's just honestly one of the best experiences of my life was doing this. Uh, you, if you're part of the IGDA, which is like for students, 25 bucks a year. You can apply to this program, and if you get accepted, what they do is they take you uh, to an industry event. So GDC, E3, uh, so I was fortunate to go to E3, and then uh, Casual Connect in Seattle. Uh, they take you to these different uh, industry events. They give you the backstage tour, and you get to meet a bunch of VIPs. Uh, like I met, we met the inventor of the Xbox, we met the guy who did Fruit Ninja, uh, we met Jinova Chen, who's the journey guy. Uh, and you get to meet all these awesome things and get these backstage tours of that we went to Microsoft's headquarters, we went to Bungie, uh, we toured Valve Studios, we actually met Gabe Newell, that was really cool. Uh, and then go through that entire conference and you just build this amazing community with these fellow scholars. So like I'm still in contact with five of those people up there. Uh, and they do this six times a year. Uh, they do Tokyo Game Show, GDC, they do uh, MIGS, Montreal, Independent Game Summit or something like that, International Game Summit. Uh, a bunch of different ones. They used to do PAX East, they don't do it anymore. But I, I cannot say enough good things about IGDA Scholars. It was just an amazing opportunity. And it's only for students. So there's so many other things that are only for students out there. And if you are not doing everything possible while you're a student, you, you have to. You're, not, you're wasting your time if you're not doing that. So BFA, Boston Fig has a student showcase you can enter. Uh, the Game Awards have a student category. The IGF uh, has a student category. Every competition out there has a student category. So if you're making these games, why not submit them somewhere and get recognized? If you can put that award on your resume, hey, I won the best graphics for student game at you know, the video game awards or whatever it is, that's such a step up, right? Another thing is I want you to utilize your faculty. I can't tell you the number of times that I've sat alone in my office during office hours because nobody wanted to come talk to me. Your faculty are trained experts, uh, and if you're not using them for everything that you can get out of them, uh, you're wasting your money, because they are literally paid by you to be there to help you. And if you're not using that, it's, it's, just, it's like burning money. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So 
your faculty have expertise in your coursework, sure, the classes they're teaching, but they also have expertise in a bunch of different areas that you might not know. You might not know that your professor has made a VR game or maybe they did some cool work with a nonprofit or something like that. Talk to them, get to know what they're interested in and see how they can help you. It is their job to help you. You are not bothering them, <laughs> you pay their salary. So utilize them for everything they're worth. Also, on the same note, challenge them. Don't, if they say something that maybe you don't agree with or maybe, maybe you've heard something differently, challenge what they have said because they're not the absolute authority. I know they like to think they are. Case in point, like <laughs> this presentation. Could not be factual, I could be just pulling shit out of my ass, but if you're not calling me out on it, if you're not challenging a professor to learn more, to go further, then uh, again, that's a detriment to your own education. Find yourself a mentor if possible. I sort of talked about that when we were talking about networking, but mentorship is so important. And when you're networking, you'll find a dozen people who are willing to mentor you because they want you to grow. They want to cultivate that game development community that we have that is so positive. Um, find them and learn from them. Uh, you can find people on LinkedIn. You can find people at networking. Just shoot them a quick message. Say, I really love that you worked on this game. Can, you, can I pick your brain on X, Y, and Z? And that sort of relationship will develop over time. And then you can sort of turn to them and eventually they'll be a contact and maybe they'll get you a job someday. But if you don't take that chance, you don't put yourself out there, then they're, again, they're not gonna come to you. So ask to shadow somebody for a day. Ask if you can tour a studio. Turbine's here, they do tours all the time. If you know somebody, go on LinkedIn, find who's a QA or a programmer, or whatever you're interested in at that studio. Just quick message, hey, I'm a student from here. I saw that you're working on this. That's so cool, I wanna be you. Can I follow you for a day? Flatter them. They'll, they'll eat it up, right? Uh, another thing, we need to get ready to move, all right? Boston is, if you want to work in AAA games, Boston is not the place to live, all right? And that sucks to hear because we all live here, but that's just the reality of it, okay? We have a great community. We have a great indie scene. That's awesome, but we have literally a non-existent AAA space. Turbine just laid off half their staff. Harmonix has laid off half their staff. All the big names are just falling apart. And they're moving on. I think we still have a Rockstar chapter somewhere. Uh, hit, uh, Disruptor Beam laid off half their staff too. Uh, it's bad. So we need to start moving. And I put a list here of some of the bigger places that we should move to. But San Francisco, this is just a list of how many game studios are in that city. London, San Francisco, if you don't speak Japanese, do not move to Tokyo or French, don't move to Paris. Austin's a big place, LA, Seattle, those are destinations. And if you come to terms with the fact that when I graduate, I am moving away from Boston, it's gonna be a lot easier to move rather than this sort of got uprooted. Uh, and, and if you have the means, move to those cities now, like not, not during your education, but before you get a job, if you have the means to do that, because people are a lot more likely to hire someone who lives locally than they are to pay for someone to move to them, especially at entry-level positions. Because entry-level people are so dime a dozen that it's, I'm not gonna pay for your relocation expenses. And then lastly, before I go to questions, is just give back, right? Talked about this awesome gaming community um, and be part of it. There's, there's always someone, like, no matter how low you are in the totem pole, there's always someone lower than you who you can help in some way, the same way that you want someone to help you. So if you're in college, you could find high school students, mentor them. You could find people who are just entering the game industry and give them advice. You know more than they do, clearly. Uh, whether it's volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club, maybe you teach the, the video game mayor of Badge of Boy Scouts. I don't care what it is, but become a contributor at this uh, in this in this awesome space and this is a little unrelated but volunteer at events as well that's really an awesome time to meet people volunteer at bfig volunteer at pax to run someone's booth to get that experience and that will that's a form of networking where you'll get to meet the developers and work with them which is really cool it's also going to help hone your skills right if i volunteer to teach high schoolers uh, unity it's going to help me practice unity it's going to help my people skills uh, and it's just, it's just makes you a better person, to be honest. So I was going to leave 10, uh, a few minutes for questions, but again, if you want to follow up with me, I, Owen Leach, teach at Becker College. You can reach me at owen.leach at becker.edu. None of my opinions reflect anything about Becker, and in no way do they, in no way advocate anything that I said. Uh, also, you can find me on Twitter at bomb shelter games, but that's, or at under, bomb underscore shelter, but that's more my indie company rather than Becker stuff. All right. Cool. Hopefully that wasn't too depressing. <laughs> but seriously, like, it's such an opportunity. Uh, you have four years to make something amazing. I, 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 if you don't, it's just a waste of money, right? If, if you don't go all in, you're never going to get this shot again. So go all in now. Uh, otherwise, you're going to miss that train. You're going to sort of regret it uh, later in life.
Mm. Question? Yeah, of course. Uh, what was your, like, I know you said I knew God so the whole of the grade series, but yeah. is there, like, one key moment that you were, like, like, it, like was this surreal? Or, like, well, what, during the scholarship thing? Or, or just, I mean... When I walked in E3 for the first time, that was mind blowing. Um, they also pair you with a mentor. So you can say, hey, I'm really interested in tech art. Uh, and one of my peers, I, he wasn't in that photo. He was an, I was a two time scholar. And a different one said he wanted to be a tech artist. And he met the lead tech artist at Naughty Dog. I thought he was gonna weep, like just the, the brightness in his face. But I got paired up with uh, uh, Ben Sawyer, who runs Games for Change. And so I'm like, I was super into serious games, educational games, I still am today. but. He's like the face of serious games, and he sat down and talked with me alone for like an hour, and I was like, I can't even. He's, his phone number is in my phone, and I still can't deal with that. Like, that's amazing that I could just call him. I, I don't, because that's weird, right? Breaking the rule. But um, it was so amazing. Like, wow. Or, or meeting the guy who did Fruit Ninja, who's just like some regular guy. He's like, yeah, cool. I did Fruit Ninja. It was fun. Um, it's, uh, that was pretty neat. So, yeah, of course. You mentioned uh, summer camps that teach game skills to yeah. middle schoolers or high schoolers. Are, I have a lot of summer camp experience. That's something I'd be interested in. You mentioned digital media. Yeah. Uh, digital media academy. Are there any others that you can Yep. Uh, Imagination is one. Um, and then id tech. Sorry, what was that? Id tech, ID tech uh, camps. And so the, uh, yeah. those are the three I know off the top of my head right now. Thank you. Did anybody else work at any of those would know? Oh, do it. But it's good money, it's fun, summer camps are fun, so. I like Digital Media Academy the most because it's not overnight. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, I can't tolerate kids very long, I've, but yeah. I've lived that life. Okay, it's, yeah, it's exactly. So Digital Media is a, a nine to five, they teach it out of Harvard, um, one of the buildings at Harvard, Harvard Square there on the Harvard campus, and it's good, pretty good money. It's like 1,100 bucks for a week or whatever. All right, so, cool. Yeah, of course. Uh, what are your thoughts on like, Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just think, like, there's not, a, not an obvious path to computer. Yeah. There's no entry-level producer. Right. So that's what I was going to say. A lot of people cross-transfer. Like, they'll transfer from another um, place where they have management experience. So that one is, like, number one is management experience. Can you get it specifically in a field that sells products? Um, and if you can get an electronic-based product, uh, entertainment software, or even, like, a, a lot of people transfer from film and stuff like that, uh, that's what I would... It's really about experience in that one uh, and being efficient and being like a people person, being able to talk to people and be confident and tell things they don't want to hear <laughs> uh, is pretty important for producers. Yeah, of course. So where do you stand with marketing stuff? Because it's pretty Should be a place for like in games education. Should there be like a marketing component to it? Yeah. Do you think it should be intertwined? I do. I, so there's a lot. Marketing as a whole is such a huge business, and uh, my friend of mine actually is a is a marketing professional. And I, I honestly think we don't. The world of games education is not prepping people to make games by themselves because we're not training people to do all of those things. And I mean, yeah, you can make the best game in the world, but you don't know how to market it. No one's gonna buy it, right? Like, that's, that's it. I re released a, a phone game to the vacuum and it never said anything about it. 100 people downloaded it. Right? It's ridiculous. So I think that there is, the game education space is so focused on AAA where it's not your problem, right? There was someone hired to do marketing. Don't worry about it. Um, that I think that is a, a I, should be a, I don't know, there's a hole there that I think should be filled uh, to make a more rounded education. Cool. Awesome. Well, we got about five minutes, so I'm gonna hand over to the marketing talk, of course. We had an example of a student who's going above and beyond, right? Giving talks, networking, awesome. So yeah, uh, we got a five minute break, but uh, we'll pick up from there with Jordan.